I am honored to serve as director of the McGill Program for Journalistic Courage, which honors the memory of Ralph McGill by exploring what journalistic courage means and how is it exemplified by journalists. For four decades, we have welcomed journalists to campus to give the McGill Lecture, adding the symposium Exploring Journalistic Courage in 2007, and in 2009, extending the McGill Program to include the McGill Medal. The medal honors a working journalist, or in today's case, journalist, whose career demonstrates courage. Our first medal was awarded to Jerry Mitchell, a Mississippi journalist who endured death threats for bringing civil rights era killers to justice. In the years since, we have honored a reporting team that continued the work of a slain investigative reporter, correspondents covering war-torn regions, including some who were jailed for their work, and last year, the reporting duo that broke the story of the Harvey Weinstein's decades of alleged abuse towards women. McGill Medal winners are chosen from nominations by fellow journalists, editors, journalism educators, and McGill Fellow alumni. Each nominee is researched by a current McGill Fellow who compiles a summary to support the nomination. The winner is then selected by the class. The 2018 McGill Fellows class, many of whom are here today, is made up of Kristen Attaway, Nikki Brown, Miranda Daniel, John Durham, Christina Maticata, Jed May, Danny MacArthur, Charlotte Norsworthy, Maddie Ray, Casey Rose, Aaron Schilling, Alex Soderstrom, and Becca Wright. Thank you guys for being here today, and thank you for being here to accept this award on behalf of your colleagues. Um, Ms. Al Mofti, Maggie Michelle, and Maad Al Zikri are Associated Press journalists living across the Middle East. As I'm sure you gathered from this video, the team has risked their lives to report on a war that the world has tried its hardest to ignore. They made sure that somebody was paying attention to it. From the middle of the poorest country in the Middle East, surrounded by a lot of people who didn't want them there, they told stories, stories about civilian deaths caused by American drone strikes, stories of child soldiers, stories of rebels stealing aid from starving civilians and numerous human rights violations in secret prisons. The stories they documented are courageous in and of themselves, but the way they gathered those stories is another matter entirely. The team had to do their best to avoid rebels and armed factions carrying out the civil war by blending in to the best of their abilities. They gained the trust of Yemenis to share their experiences despite their fear of these same groups. Finally, they managed their own mental and emotional well-being in the face of all these atrocities, which is an act of courage that should never go unnoticed. Ms. El Mofti, Maggie Michelle, and Mahad Al Zikri's reporting showed us behind the curtain of Yemen's civil war from the personal struggles of everyday people to the international powers pulling the strings from overseas. Thank you so much for making us pay attention. And we're not the only ones who are paying attention. As of today, this team is a 2018 Pulitzer Prize winner in international reporting. So if we could take a hand to that, that's incredible. <laughs> so, on behalf of the McGill Fellows, it is my honor to present you on behalf of your colleagues with the 2019 McGill Medal for Journalistic Courage. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. It's such an honor to be here and be presented this medal for my two colleagues and I. It's really unfortunate that Maggie Michelle and Madame Zikri were unable to make it here, but we are all so humbled for this recognition. This medal is for the people of Yemen who were so brave to open up and tell us their stories. We have covered a number of stories and met so many people along the way, people who have shown resilience, pride and generosity beyond what we had seen before. In one of our stories, we focused on the issue of torture. And I mention here a person whose image shall be ingrained in my memory forever, a young man named Anas, 
who was brutally tortured in prison and as a consequence has to live the rest of his life on a wheelchair. The pain that you could see in his eyes while narrating his story, the pain that will be carried inside him forever. But famine and starvation, an issue that is plaguing Yemen now, the slowest form of torture I've seen. To bring this closer to home, if there are like 30 people here, almost half of you would be at risk of starvation, if not already starving to death. Yet in the midst of all this, you see the kindness and generosity of a person like Hogar, a mother of eight who skips meals for her children to eat while being man nourished herself. All the family has is one loaf of bread to share and some tea every day. She refused to let us leave till we had a bite of that loaf of bread. We really hope that we work the work we did and we continue to do can bring some relief, hopefully lead change, even if only a little. Thank you to the university for this recognition. This wouldn't have happened without our team. Maggie Michelle, one of the sharpest investigative journalists out there. Madis Zikri, one of the best video journalists I know. And Lee Keith, our editor, who's an exceptionally smart journalist himself. So Mad and I haven't been to journalism university <laughs> And it's so humble, humbling to be here amongst such wonderful students and faculty. I will say this to the students, no assignment is too small and always look at your plate, not someone else's, just your own. Know what you're good at and you're so lucky to have professors guide you on your path. Not every strong story is in the hotspot of the world. Some of the strongest stories are driven from your backyard and what you really know. You know your environment better than anyone, and that gives you strength in telling a story. Personalize a story, don't, don't victimize your subjects. Know what you're really passionate about and what really drives you. This industry is tough, and you will need thick skin to keep going. As someone once said to me when I started in the newsroom, are you ready to be raised between the wolves? <laughs> I understood it later. <laughs> Don't ever despair when a story doesn't go your way. You'll be on the street, not between four walls, sitting comfortably in chairs. Keep going back and trying. Believe in your work, because this industry is so transparent that if you don't, no one else will. Thank you.